Hi everybody, I'm Jamie. And I'm John. And this is the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. If you're a big Elvis fan like us, this is your society, our society, the EAP Society. Uh, this is basically Aloha Month, I guess. Uh, the, you know, it's pretty wild. The 50th anniversary. 50 years, man. It's crazy. I mean, so, so I say 50 80, years like I know what that means. I wasn't around. Right, was yeah. 80, 90, 2000, 2010, 2023. Yeah. 50 years. Um, so we're going to be looking. We thought, hey, you know what? If we're going to be doing this, we need to look at a bunch of different things pertaining to Aloha. And I want to say something off the bat. I'm going to say this every video. Um, I don't know where... In my head, I got that it was a different flute player each night. <laughs> I am dead wrong. Yeah. When you said that, I was like, wait a minute, was there a different flute player? Mm -hmm. But I didn't say anything. Yeah, yeah. Because I assumed Jamie knew more than I did. Yeah. <laughs> and no, I was talking out my head. Uh, the, uh, I don't understand where I got that idea from. Um, Actually, I bet I know. Okay. Uh, I bet you got it from the performance of American Trilogy and Elvis on tour. It's a different guy playing the flute in that movie. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it is. I, anyway, so, yeah, uh, dead wrong. So, uh, if you go to watch the other Aloha video where we uh, unboxed the um, the FTD release, um, don't listen to me. That was completely that was completely wrong. The rest of the video is fine, uh, more or less. There's a couple okay. of things. There's a couple of things. Not not one of not one of my best. We kind of do these on the fly sometime, <laughs> and uh, you know, every now and then you say things that are wrong. I've done it too. Yep. But uh, we have a really awesome uh, group of folks out there who are very quick to let us know, um, guys, uh, that's not right. And uh, and we always I, I try to pin the comment. So if you see a pinned comment that's not us, <laughs> you know that, oh, okay, they must have screwed something up somewhere along the way. Um, the, only, the only problem with YouTube, I'm going to let you all know ahead of time, is I can only pin one comment at a time. So if, there's a, if there are several things that, that, uh, that are not quite right, uh, whatever one I think is the most important is the one that's been pinned to the top if I have to pick from a few. So if you have an additional one, reply to that pinned comment. Actually, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, indeed. So, yeah. So, and to the entire community, thank you very much for keeping us honest. I, I, I'm not kidding. We appreciate it. Absolutely. We seriously do. So, with that having been said, uh, there have been a great number of books and things that have come out over the years pertaining to Aloha from Hawaii. Um, and we're going to look at two that are particular favorites. Uh, before we get into that, uh, I love, I love this guy. Uh, this was, um, this is from one of the fan, uh, this is from one of the fan club, uh, president luncheon events. And, um, yeah, so they had people in, in these, in costumes kind of like dancing outside, uh, the arena as wow. people were going in by the fountains and, or by the, yeah, by the fountains and all that kind of stuff. So uh, they made little tabletop things, and I thought, this is so cool. So we have to have this little guy as a showcase every time we start one of the videos pertaining to Aloha, because it's just too cool. Absolutely. It's very cool. And it is a permanent part of our set, at least for this first season. Absolutely. So we're going to look at two books that, uh, like I said, we picked two to kind of show everybody. Um, this is sort of a... A little bit of an evolution of uh, uh, of one particular author that has been uh, fairly fairly prolific over the years, just because they've had so many releases. Yes, uh, those of you in the know will know that we're talking about Joseph A. Tunzi, who mm -hmm. runs Jet Publishing, and uh, Joe Joe's a good friend of ours, mm -hmm. and he's kind of the guy who sort of pioneered the Elvis picture book market. I would say. I would say so. Yeah. Like he, he was out there doing like really highly specific uh, event picture books before anybody else. Yep. And so we're going to look at one of his earlier uh, attempts to cover the Aloha, which is uh, maybe the most photographed event of the most photographed person on earth. <laughs> and then we'll look at one of the most recent uh, Tunzi collaborations on Aloha photographs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... Uh... Yeah, just very cool. 
Yep, Joseph Pizzotta, Joseph Prezada, Joseph Tunzi, and text by Steve Brilli. All three friends of the show. Absolutely, <laughs> friends of the show. Good, good, uh, good guys all around. We love people even when they don't always love each other. Because this is, uh, no, I'm not saying these guys because they all, you know, they, they do. But uh, the, uh, yeah, we're. But well, we're both people who get along with almost everyone in the Elvis community, which yep. is sometimes difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because uh, it's because we're, we're not going after some of the things that they're going after. Right, probably exactly. Why. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so gotten to know uh, gotten to know a lot of people in the Elvis world over the years, and uh, a little bit in the collecting world. Um, but uh, so two two really special books. And you get to see, uh, you get to see a little bit about uh, what time can do, and right, and cool. what uh, once a market is carved out, mm -hmm. what it can be expanded to. Now, this book I believe came out in 1999. Let me make sure before I say 1998. Okay. So this is the Aloha Via Satellite. Uh, it was released in 1998 at the time. So the 25th anniversary. 25th anniversary. It had a BMG collector CD enclosed of the Aloha Via Satellite. And um, it's got an introduction by Marty Pacetta, who was the producer of the show. And, you know, when we first got these Tunzi books, we were so starved for new Elvis content that we did whatever we could to get a hold of the copies of these. Even though at the time, like, most of these were black and white photo books. Yeah. We can kind of... Yeah, we'll kind of show you... Flip we'll, through there. We'll kind of show you the front. And I like how this, uh, the, the <laughs> Chicken of the Sea logo... Yeah. Let me tell you, Chicken of the Sea, if you find a copy of Aloha with a Chicken of the Sea label on it. I have had an original. I'm one of the few people who have had an original copy of the Chicken of the Sea Aloha. Yeah. One of the rarest records you can get. Wow. The sticker is on the shrink wrap. If you see someone with an album and it is affixed to the face of the album rather than the shrink wrap, something's not right about that. Okay. Yeah. Now, could they have peeled it off? If it's not shrink wrapped, could they peel it off and put it on? It's very possible. That okay. could have been done, Okay, but I wouldn't count on it. Take a good look at the sticker. If you know some things about printing, you can generally tell whether or not it's a like a Xerox or a oh, copy okay. or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're going to show you just a little quick glimpse of uh, an unboxing of a 25th anniversary. So this is 25 years old now. Wow. So Aloha. That's from, halfway to Aloha. It is halfway to Aloha. That's a cool name for a movie. Cool name for a book. Um, so you get to see, and you know, and the uh, and due to the uh, higher cost of publishing at the time, uh, a lot of the books are uh, black and white. Yes, and uh, yeah. And some books today are you know it's still not cheap to to do uh, printing. Well, you also got to think at the time like. You have to have the expense of acquiring the photos from yep. collectors. If you're going to have something written and you're a publisher, you got to have somebody write the text. That is an expense. Yep. Then you're limited by how many of these things you can sell and what price people will pay exactly. to do exactly what you can do. Yep. I don't know how many copies he made of each of these, but I think the retail price on these back in the day was about $40. I believe that's right, 40 or 49. Right. Now, this uh, second book we're going to look at is much more expensive today. Yeah. But I think it offers more bang for the buck mm -hmm. as well. So, this is Elvis warmed up for his worldwide telecast with a total of three performances at the Honolulu International Center, November 17th, 1972. Yes. And so, you get up. The November 72 performances exist. Uh, they were very well documented on 8mm mm -hmm. film. They are fun to see. I love... I, I, I love the Conquistador. Yeah. That's also known as the Way Down suit. Yes. Because it is on the single. Full Way Down. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. 
Well, you know, and a lot of fans didn't know what the names of these uh, of the suits were. Yeah, so this is kind of you know, it's something that grew up organically. Mm-hmm. Like there weren't names; we just gave them names. Right. And sometimes we gave them more than one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All but there, them. but there were there were names for a number of the suits internally. You know, not all. Perhaps. Yeah. Like all I know of is is the names what the, fans? the fans gave. Yeah. yeah. Or photographers. Yeah. I've heard that there were some names for them. And for at least, not all of them, but for at least some. I know Elvis had nicknames for some of them. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's basically, yeah, that's basically what I'm referring to. Yeah. One thing that's been pretty consistent is the name of the suit that he wore in this special. <laughs> yeah. It bit. is called the Aloha Eagle or the American Eagle. Yeah. Although the American Eagle shares a name with... Shares a name with this American Eagle. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Which is why people had to distinguish the embroidered American Eagle. If you just want to call it the Aloha suit, everybody knows what you mean. Everybody knows what you mean. Yeah. And then you've got uh, the schedule. Okay, so this is kind of cool. So January 2nd, 1973... Uh, depart travel to Hawaii Continental uh, 603 LAX. Uh, so you've got um, uh, Marty Pizzetta and his wife. And so this has the entire shooting schedule ever when everybody got in. It even has when they break for meals. That's cool. So, like, should you at some point encounter someone who's invented a time machine right. and you want to go back in time and meet Elvis, yeah. you would know when was the best time to do it. Exactly. Yeah, it's also nice to uh, to do a timeline uh, of the of the events, so that way you kind of know. Okay, well, when were they when were they dealing with this issue or that issue, and you know some of the rehearsals and things. And yeah. as pedantic as it might seem to outsiders, if you are an Elvis collector and you are trying to verify certain stories that relate to provenance of artifacts, yeah. you would be amazed at how often information like that comes in handy. It's true. It's absolutely true. Yep. Beautiful shots. Even in black and white, they're quite stunning. They are quite stunning. And, you know, it would be... It would be kind of cool... Uh, well, the, 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 is, that, is that the one for the He Touched Me? It's very similar it's very to similar. it, but I don't think it's no. exactly it. No. Now, these are from the uh, rehearsal that we're looking at right now. Yeah. Now, um, the it would be amazing at, at some point to look at... See, the flashing Elvis silhouette, silhouette was causing interference. The problem was solved by ordering lead shields from Pearl Harbor. They arrived and were in place just before Elvis went on. That's crazy. I did not realize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get some really interesting... And, you know... And some shots that are kind of on the rare side, especially at the time. Um, yeah, these were these were all mostly unfamiliar when this book came out. Yeah, I would say like you'd seen a scattering of them on uh, Aloha releases. Yeah, or other photo books. But to have one sustained sort of photo essay collection yeah. about one event, yeah, was a novel thing back. Then. It certainly was. And you, it's really interesting to see, like, the difference in Elvis's hair. Well, there you go. So, alternate on one side and Aloha on the other. He looks much more kempt yeah. during the Aloha. It's, and it's crazy what that does to... Just your perception of his face. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It seems so much more sculptural with the short hair. Yeah. But I can see why I liked it longer, too. Yep. Funny thing is, is I found that out myself. Uh, one of the videos that we did in the first round of uh, filming, I hadn't cut my hair yet. <laughs> and I was like, wow, I, that doesn't look good at all. <laughs> so I picked it up like, oh, okay, geez, it's different. I look, yeah. Um, but really cool. I mean, um, get that on. So the show was broadcast in Australia, Japan, New Zealand, Thailand, South Vietnam, and the Philippines. It was shown in Europe on the following day. That's a pretty cool little shot of him uh, 
handing that out there or getting ready to getting yeah getting ready to or no that's no i think he's actually that might be putting it on um uh, there's a those those are two now iconic oh, yeah. shots very familiar poses yeah and the aloha is probably the concert that you see most represented in photos from the 70s I would say, Especially yeah. in use by uh, Elvis Presley Enterprises and things that they do. Yeah. Because Elvis looked phenomenal that night. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's really interesting, some of the, th some of the things, and we'll talk about this in, other, uh, in, in some other videos. Um, the, um, really interesting to see, um, uh, to hear about uh, sto some stories that we've been hearing from behind the scenes. Um about uh, censorship. Yes. Never would have thought that was a thing in the in 1973. Yes. Elvis seems so tame, like uh, compared to like the 50s of it. That that's an awesome shot, right? That's there. a great shot. Yeah, very yeah. unusual shot. Too. And then, uh, so actually, I'm gonna <laughs> I hold it up for like two seconds here. Let me make sure you all get a good look at that. And uh, when we're referring to censorship, uh, we were told by a good friend of ours. Yeah. That Elvis uh, Elvis said that the Aloha censors uh, made Ed Sullivan look like uh, I can't remember what he was saying. What, what I can't remember exact saying. Uh, yeah, I can't remember either. But like the gist of it was the Aloha censors were much worse that are much more restrictive than Ed Sullivan's censors had been. Mm -hmm. um, they uh, made him change certain lyrics, like uh, "Burn in Love." He couldn't say "The flames are now licking my body," which had to yeah. change it to "Reaching my body." Wow. I guess it was a little too much of a visual. Yeah, and I think was it Fever or one of the other songs? Like yes. they, they said they wanted his feet. If you ever noticed that Elvis, especially in the main special, his feet are very planted in certain spots. That wasn't just a decision thing. That was a censors being censors thing. Couldn't do all the wiggling that he did in Fever. So funny. So if the if the Aloha special seems a little subdued. When compared to Elvis's regular tour performances, it was. Yeah. Specifically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was specifically forced on, uh, yeah. Can you imagine? And, and, and if we think about, you know, some of the times of Elvis having a little bit of a, of a time trying to remember the lyrics, you also have to remember that he had to learn lyric changes that were done, like, what, not even a week before. Yeah. Um... And then we're, yeah, they were done not even a week before. And so he's like, wait, can I say this? <laughs> it's like, that's gonna, that's gonna screw with you. Especially if you're used to singing a song. Absolutely. You know, well, think about it. Burning Love is one of the ones in the alternate that he messes up. And, and he's just, yeah. And I think that explains why a lot of people perceive the, the main night of Aloha to be sort of a cautious performance. That yeah. has a lot to do with it. Oh, Completely. He wants to make sure that, you know, he's not doing anything to offend anybody. He's yeah. presenting himself well. He's Maybe saying the right words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and for an international in an, for an international event, you don't just have the U.S. censors to think about, I would exactly. expect. Exactly. You've got, like, you know, wherever it's going to air, all of that needs to be worked out in advance. That's something that, that, that's something that I certainly never thought about. No. Absolutely not. You know, I mean, uh, yeah. So this, uh, yeah. So this doesn't even, yeah. This doesn't even get into uh, some of the, uh, some of the the various rehearsals. How great thou art omitted. I got a woman omitted. All shook up omitted. Little sister omitted. One night omitted. The wonder of you omitted. My babe omitted. Um, huh. I wonder if there's a reason for it. Yeah. So. Or they just weren't going to use those in the show. Possibly. That that's that I yeah. Yeah, those were, yeah, because I, th I think they might have been uh, considered, but rejected. Rejected by the censors. <laughs> it's like, God, it's, just, it's the 70s, half the crowd's high. No, I'm kidding. I mean, how great the art wouldn't have been. I mean, I don't know, there, there was some pushback to having religious songs on uh, Ed Sullivan in the 50s, so maybe yeah. it was still kind of a... I suppose. A thing that maybe advertisers didn't really want. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, chick chicken of the sea is gonna sell less tuna if all those things how great they are. <laughs> so, yeah, great picture. Those those were taken in Elvis's dressing room, mm -hmm. backstage at the 
H I C yeah. Arena. These pictures here. Not this one. <laughs> I was, this performance was given to raise money for cancer research. Elvis did his part. If you'd like to help, contact the American Cancer Society in your area. And see, yeah. Oh, and and uh, an artist rendition design. Or, oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, an artist re artist's rendition of the design for the set. And I, I think I've probably mentioned this before, uh, maybe in our last episode when we were talking about the FTV, but. That set makes that arena look so much bigger on television than it does in person. Yeah. It's a very small arena. It is. Yeah. Even smaller than I had initially thought, because apparently when I was there in, in 2013, that was more of the arena than they used. Wow. Yeah. Which I thought wouldn't have been possible, but yeah, but like I think I said before, like the space between Elvis's dressing room and the stage is like less than twenty feet. Right, you're just right out on stage. So this, obviously, a fortieth anniversary celebration that should tell you came out about ten years ago. Yeah. On January 14th, 1973, Elvis Aloha from Hawaii via satellite was the first live concert to be televised live with a global viewing audience of 1.5 billion, the audience larger than a man's first walk on the moon. This massive, most comprehensive volume uh, celebrates the 40-year anniversary of one of the most groundbreaking events in the annals of television history and the definitive achievement in the, in the illustrious life and career of one Elvis Presley. Collected here exclusively are scores of documents, historic memorabilia, and photographs intended to create a time travel experience of sorts, which culminates in a handheld virtual concert. From the making of the show to the show itself, the reader enjoys reliving the magic of this extraordinary event and is sufficiently reminded that <laughs> 1.5 billion Elvis fans can't be wrong. Ah, I like it. I, I, I dig that. That's I love how they sort of reference the uh, uh, album. Uh -huh. it, you, you know the Aloha album has the cutout, and you can see the, sl the inner sleeve beneath. Yeah. They sort of reference that on here. Yeah, well, we can... Here, let's get out... Uh, get out the little album. Yeah. And this book is a co-production between J.A.T., Tunzi's publishing company, and Boxcar Publishing. They did a fabulous job on this book. The little detail of the cover cutout is just the beginning. Yeah. Right. So this is the this is the Japanese uh, paper sleeve collection. But to, just to kind of give you an idea, just like this, we have. I'm gonna set that right like that. So you guys don't need to watch me take five minutes to put that back in. <laughs> so here we are. We can get it. There we go. This book is. Very heavy. And actually, if I remember correctly, depending on how, well, no, it was just saying, depending on how you wanted to do it, it Elvis's, part of Elvis's face would fit in that. that. Perhaps. Perhaps. And just so you can see, here's the side. Very substantial box that, or slip oh. cover that it comes in. Yes. Can you imagine if the FTV sessions would be like this? That would be really Not nice. this large. I mean, sure. No, no, just that thick. Just that thick yeah. with that kind of cardboard. That was my, or that kind of um, card like. You know, this is similar to like when Bob Dylan, uh, when his label does bootleg releases, which is also Sony, which is, is Sony, I should yeah, say. Yeah. Uh, they're about that substantial. Wow. So, that would be cool. Think about it. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, beautiful cover. This is the back and the spine. And look at this. That's got some that's got some oomph to it. And the front. I love that back cover shot. I do too. Both of these are fairly iconic pictures of Elvis, but seeing them in this size with this high quality printing and color is it really does have an effect. Mm-hmm. It certainly does. So this is that's oh wow. That's a neat shot. Yeah, it's the Colonel and Marty Pacetta, it looks like. Yeah. And one of the little robots. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's see. That's a lot smaller. <laughs> That's a lot smaller than the uh, than the other ones that were outside. Yeah. Yeah, because those things were like the size of a person. They were huge. <laughs> the ones that they have on display at Graceland 
are about this size. Oh, okay, so yeah. they must be these. So now, th I, as I said, this is a really heavy book. Normally, I would want to do this. Um, I want to take care not to hurt the book. Yes. So in this instance, you guys are going to have to just kind of look. <laughs> I can assist. Thanks, sir. As best I can. So, and thank, and a big thank you to uh, Joseph Brizada and Joe Tunzi for putting this together. Absolutely. Great close-up shot mm -hmm. that's been used on several releases. Yep. The pages are thick. And so many pictures that we got to see for the first time in color. And if you can get your hands on one of these, what are these going for now? These are quite expensive these days. Wow. They were quite expensive when they came out. They were. Um, definitely worth it, though. Um, you've got documentation of everything from the first press conference that announced Aloha all the way to the show. And the pictures are super high quality uh, reproductions. Yeah, you really couldn't ask for anything better. Yeah, this is. Th I would be. I can't imagine something more definitive. Yeah, I can't either. And there is a more recent uh, book on Aloha that is published um, by the guys who do the Elvis Files. I I have not got that book and looked through it, just because I can't imagine it being this good. It could very well be. If you've got it and you've compared them, leave Let a us comment. Let us know. Yeah, but. The graphic design on this is good. The documents included are fabulous. Mm -hmm. I just don't. I don't see a top in this. Yeah. But hey, you know what? If we can, um, if we can track down a copy, we'll be happy to to uh, look at it for you. We build up the member base enough on uh, Patreon. Go ahead and go to. Uh, uh, EAPsociety.com and click on become a member. We build up enough members. We are not only going to give away even things as large as this bad boy, um, but uh, we will also be able to uh, collect more of these uh, releases to show you specifically. Um, things that are not things that we would normally purchase for ourselves. Right. Because those we just, those we get. <laughs> you know, that stuff we already get. We're not worried about that. Now, these are pictures from the second Aloha press conference that was in November of 72. And this was at the uh, Hilton Hawaiian Village. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful location, by the way. It really is. Oh, now we're getting into some color shots. Yeah, and the, the shots are either printed in black and white or colored, depending on how they were taken. Yeah. So if you're seeing it in color, it hasn't been colorized. It's original color. Yep. If you're seeing it in black and white, that's because the camera stock that was in the photographer's camera was black and white film. Very cool. I did not know that. Especially news photographers back in the day, or people who worked for magazines, yeah. would carry both kinds of stocks because it was much easier to get a black and white reproduction from a black and white negative. Mm. That's cool. And oftentimes they would have filters on the cameras that had black and white film in them that wouldn't exactly work with color film. Oh, okay. This is called the Aloha suit that Elvis wore during the satellite show January 14th here on display with the third Aloha belt. Wow. We also get to read some correspondence from Tom Diskin about the Aloha. That's cool. And you can see the the suits. The suits, multiple suits. Mm -hmm. I love the detail shots. Great shot of the belt. Yep. Wow. Ooh, now we get yeah, this that's really pretty. Beautiful. Elvis's special song list. <laughs> this is really cool. Yeah. 
And you have the publishing information for all the songs that he performed here. Nice. So Elvis's special song list. Let's see. Um, My way is born to lose. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Baby, don't yeah. get hooked on me. Ooh. Don't know that one. Yeah. Baby, baby, don't get hooked on me. Yeah. Really? I think. I think that might be. What about without you? Not, no idea. I mean, I don't think it's the Jimmy Sweeney song. I, I wouldn't imagine. Can you, could you imagine Elvis in 73 going, oh yeah, by the way. Ladies and gentlemen, let me play you a song that was the first thing I tried to record in Sun Studio after my two acetates. <laughs> he wouldn't have been that specific. No, no. Uh, Elvis Presley Show Worldwide, uh, Satellite Show, You Gave Me a Mountain, What Now I Love, something 12th of Never. That's cool. Uh, it's Impossible. Oh, look at the last one there on the S list. Susie Q. Susie Q. That would have been interesting. Yeah. So let's see. Little Okay, so over here on the, on the left-hand side, uh, Little Sister, One Night, um, Blue Sweet Shoes, All Shook Up. The Wonder of You, Teddy Bear, Don't Be Cruel, um, My Babe. Well, wow. Would have been interesting to hear Elvis in 73 doing My Babe again. Yeah, I think that would be nice. Yeah. Uh, let's see, American Trilogy, California in Love, and How Great Thou Art. Interesting. Interesting that How Great Thou Art is listed after Can't Help Falling in Love. Hmm. Maybe he was thinking of making it a, like an encore. Uh, maybe. That would have been interesting. Crazy to think of that. That's, wow. That's so cool. Fascinating information. I wanted to take the time to read that one because I thought that would be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so songs to be cleared for possible performance. Mm -hmm. uh, something, 12th of Never, I'll Remember You, Separate Ways. That would have been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny Be Good, but Johnny is spelled wrong. Uh, Poke Sal and Annie, Funny How Time Slips Away. Lottie Miss Claudie, My Way, It's Over, It's Impossible, Steamroller Blues, and Suzy Q again. Wow. So maybe Suzy Q was actually under consideration. Yeah. Seems, uh, yeah. Uh, so, Paradise, so show opening, Paradise Wine Style, Arrival at Auditorium. Uh, let's see, the CC Rider. Uh, uh, CC Rider, I Got a Woman, Until It's Time for You to Go. Wait, yeah, weird. CC writer, I got a woman. Tell it's time for you to go. Love me tender. You gave me a mountain. What now, my love? You don't have to say you love me. Fever. So this is actually very similar to the Madison Square Garden uh, set list in ways. It is. Uh, fever. Love me. Little sister. One night. Blue suede shoes. The wonder of you. Teddy bear. Don't be cruel. It's probably the medley. Um, oh yeah, teddy bear. Don't be cruel. And then it says one forty eight after don't be cruel. So clearly. Uh, Hound Dog, My Way, Intros, Suspicious Minds, My Babe, Burn in Love, A Big Hunk of Love, and Callum Falling in Love. Huh! So, lots of lots of love going on at the end of the show. It's very interesting. It is. I would love to hear, like, okay, so... We got more. Uh, okay, Aloha from Hawaii, Satellite Rundown. Uh, Blue Hawaii, Hawaiian Wedding Song, Ku Weepo, No More, Sandcastles. Interesting. Tender Feelings. Very interesting. Ooh, okay, that, yeah, that makes me very curious. Uh, early morning rain, show closing, and credits. What would you What would you do if somebody said, "Hey, guess what, Jamie? I've, I've got, got a tape, tape of those Aloha on stage uh, sessions. sessions. I've, I've got, got Elvis, Elvis singing Tender Feeling in 1973." After, <laughs> After I pick, pick my, my jaw off, off the floor, <laughs> I'd be really, really interested. interested. I'd rather hear what Sandcastle sounded like. Uh, I'd like yeah. to hear both of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, the, the uh, well, you know, when you think, think about it, it, if you look at the way the uh, if you look at the way the Blue Hawaii soundtrack songs were done, yeah, you can get a pretty decent beat on what they would have sounded like. Exactly. You know, like um, see, yeah, absolutely. So, um, for copyright reasons, that's all you get, uh, <laughs> and then. Rundown additional, or it says, uh, Aloha from, from Hawaii via satellite. Rundown additional lyrics. That's all right. Proud Mary, never been to Spain. Uh, you lost the love and feeling. Poke salad. Uh, all shook up. Harvard Hotel. The Impossible Dream. So this is very, very similar to his 72 set. Yeah, that's what I was saying. A lot of these, uh, both this set and the last, actually reminds me of the shows he was doing in Vegas in February of 73. Like right after this. Except 
separate ways is in here. Yeah. Which, Which would have been Claudius, nice. Claudius Claudi, am I ready? That's fascinating. Am I ready? Susie Q. I, wow. Uh, okay, so I, we actually probably need to I show I wonder if these guys. were picked by like uh, Elvis or by... I'm curious. Because a lot of it is stuff that's in his show already. Right. But, the, 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 but then they're like random. The additional selections are very intriguing. They are. So, this is the uh, helicopter landing that was at the Hilton Hawaiian Village. Mm -hmm. You can find the place where this happened, even today. It's a little parking lot. Indeed. Right by the ocean. Well, of course, anything that's at the edge of the island is by the ocean. That's why it's called an island. <laughs> exactly. All I'm thinking is lines from uh, Six Days and Seven Nights. <laughs> Not seen that. Oh, it's it's fun. Yeah. There is a good picture of the Hilton Hawaiian Village. It is indeed. Yeah, I love this little down here. Great shots of Elvis. Only Elvis would arrive in Hawaii in a corduroy suit. Right? <laughs> yep. He had to be blazing hot in that thing. <laughs> Uh, it didn't matter how it felt. It's all about how it looks. <laughs> I I can attest. I can I in past experience, and then also for like costumes and things, I can attest to past and present experience. For <laughs> well, not right now. This is fairly right. Yeah, it's now November in Iowa, so the uh, that's kind of interesting. So the uh, the uh, some of the shows were in the, the sort of warm up shows were in November. And then it was, uh, and then the the actual broadcast was January. Yeah, and we we're taping this in November. It's going to be shown in January. So there you go. <laughs> symmetry, symmetry, <laughs> complete unintended symmetry. <laughs> we're going to have Elvis walk out here in a minute. Exactly. Just you wait. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. They've got like the lyric sheets. Yeah, or the the cue cue cards, giant cue cards. Because when the sensor tells you that the lyrics need to change, and you need to remember what the hell the sensors needed to change to. <laughs> what does this say? It says. Oh, I missed that. Thank you. Uh, this is just a list of uh, requirements for Elvis's rehearsal. Oh, so let's see. Uh, all Elvis's musicians. That's important. The suites. The quartet and Kathy, uh, musicians, instruments. Uh, Lyric for drums. Yeah. Lyrics, records, uh, sheet music for EP or band, Elvis's microphones, bottled water, list of songs to be used, RCA engineer. It's good to have one of those around. Uh, truck to stand by, stage monitoring system, two columns and control, and control unit. <laughs> And the, uh, it is so nice to see these in beautiful color. Oh, yeah. And again, I cannot tell you the page quality. This is one of the highest quality um, printed books I've ever seen, period. It's top notch. Most stuff that comes from Boxcar is top notch. Yeah. This is no exception. Very cool. I can't remember how much these things retailed for when they came out. It was over a hundred dollars. Yeah, probably like around 150, 175. It's well worth it. Yeah. I mean, from my perspective, this is the only Aloha photo book I'll ever need. Yeah. But for people who feel differently, mm -hmm. I understand. Oh yeah, and you know what? If new information comes to light, kind of well, kind of like what we, uh, kind of like what we discovered the other day. Right. If more information like that comes to light and has paperwork, then that would be fascinating. Like, uh, you know, corroborating letters and things like that, talking about uh, lyrics and. Uh, there's some beautiful shots.
Aha, I knew there was. <laughs> I'm going to let you all know this is quite a lengthy book, so. It is. But that's a good thing. It's such a good thing. There's not a single page that seems unnecessary. Yeah. Especially in this kind of quality. Yeah. And I will say, like, a lot of photo books um, seem to struggle with how to present photos. Yeah. Like, how to make sort of the best of their compositions. Mm -hmm. I think this one does a really nice job. I agree. The photos that they select to, like, bleed across two pages or the ones they select to leave an extreme long shot, it all looks very good. Mm -hmm. And there, there is some additional graphic design on the page, but it, it's not really obtrusive. It's gentle. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's subtle and it's gentle. And there we go. There's the song you need to keep yourself planted for. <laughs> oh, there's the shot. There you go. There's the, yeah, there's That's the, the one. There's the one. Very cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I love seeing the, seeing the stage and the runway. It just really gives a sense of atmosphere. Oh, yeah. I love, love the stage design for this. Yeah. In its own way, it is like, it is as iconic as uh, what was done for the 68 special. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. People see that imagery and they know exactly what it is. Yeah. And we're still in the alternate Aloha. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is, this goes quite a way. <laughs> this goes quite a way. Isn't this beautiful, folks? So nice. The, um, kind of go that is a beautiful beautiful shot mm -hmm. some of these look better in black and white and i'm they were taken that way but... right just amazing yep there we go there we go Ooh. Really good mm. pictures of Elvis's rings mm -hmm. and scarves. Yep. Do you know what uh, model microphone he's using here? I, I, I was thinking it was an RE15 because that was one of Elvis's favorites. But there, um, I might be mistaken on that. tell you elvis was one of these guys who could wear anything yeah but in the 70s he just like looks like he's made for these jumpsuits yeah <laughs> i don't think anybody else could quite pull it off the same way yeah uh, it, the, the, the wild thing is is elvis is not the only a lot of a lot of times people think of elvis as you know like they they associate jumpsuits with elvis but honestly um the osmonds yeah, you know what? That's very likely an RE15, but uh, there were a few models that had that same kind of uh, thing going up the neck. And they do have a very particular sound. Um, and I know because I own an RE15. Um, but, the other, but the other mic that's very similar to it also has a very similar tone. Okay. So, yeah. But I know, I know that I know the RE15 was one of Elvis's favorite mics. That is definitely what you're seeing in like '69 and '70. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's a gorgeous shot. Like these, these, these pictures printed at this size gives you a really good look at the uh, stonework mm -hmm. on the suits. Yep. And, you know, and it also shows that, 
amazingly, like the suits have aged incredibly well. Yeah, I think because so. Because the shots further back are from the are what they look like. Well, okay, ten years ago. Yeah, but uh, also a shot that got used a lot. The um, the alternate on on the well, one of which being the alternate Aloha uh, release. I remember that picture very well. That's a bad picture. <laughs> <laughs> the rare bad picture from the yeah, Aloha. Yeah, yeah. Now that shot was used on a menu. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Yeah. But again, really cool that even the ones that are, you know, not as stellar are included. Yeah, you get everything. Yep. Or at least it seems like you get It everything. seems like you get everything. That's a great shot. That's a great shot. We haven't even reached the actual Aloha yet. No, this is still, <laughs> this is just, uh, this is just coverage of the alternate. And, and we're, but we're about done because he's got, a, he's got his cape on. <laughs> there, that's a, there you that's go. That's a beautiful picture. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Hopefully this trajectory is, is good with the, not too much shine and so. That's a great one, too. Fabulous. I'm a sucker for black and white photographs. <laughs> There's just something about it that brings out the uh, composition. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Especially well taken. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. There you go. Hilton Hawaiian Village. Oh, look at that. Now, that, that's that thing that we saw in the front. There you yeah, go. That's, that is that in full color. There you so you go. get to see that, uh, yeah. And you got Colonel Parker standing over to the side there. Yeah. Oh, and here's the design for those things. There it is. Yeah. Even they look jumpsuited. They are. Yep. They are jumpsuited. <laughs> yep. They look like the. Uh, they look like some. Of, they look like some of the Christmas stuff that we looked at <laughs> in the Christmas episode. Uh, got uh, all right. Got some more see. documentation. Doc, some more here. documentation. So Aloha from Hawaii, schedule Elvis January 2nd, travel to Hawaii, Continental. Okay, so some of the stuff that was in the other, this one's actually uh, for the day. The, you I see the pa you see the paper. You actually see the paper. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Uh, production meeting. And uh, let's see, audio record Elvis, foreign lines, Marty. Um, let's see. Now, I don't know if they mean audio record Elvis as in somebody was taping it. That's a Compact an video. That's January 8th of 73. Hmm. Travel to Hawaii, Jerry Smith, Bob Keys, and S.T. Don Donald. Um, that's a production meeting. Compact video. Uh, yeah, see. Compact video checkout unit uh, to be announced. Audio record Elvis, uh, foreign lines, slash Marty. Uh, then location schedule, uh, January 9th. Opening and helicopter and all that kind of stuff. Uh, individual calls. Okay, so January tenth, uh, crew. Uh, early morning rain. Okay, so they've got so they've got a schedule here. So uh, early morning rain. A uh, few shots, no more. Uh, travel to so like some of the different places that they traveled to, filming the different like the botanical gardens for filming some of the various uh, uh, extra scenes. Very interesting. Um, let's see. Start audio on stage. HIC Arena. Uh, tech meeting. This, this is January 11th. Orchestra balance. So they were doing balancing and interiors and all that kind of stuff. They were setting that up on the 11th. Now, I know how much it costs to rent a place for a night. Uh, I cannot imagine renting, renting out for what is basically like, you know, half a week. Yeah. That uh, reminds me of uh, the Colonel. Colonel, you know, he made these little uh, buttons. Mm -hmm. I think it was for the Aloha, but it might have been for some of Elvis's earlier charity shows, and it said, how much does it cost if it's free? Yeah, exactly. So uh, so this is the schedules for, the, for January 12th, and it says uh, Elvis Presley, Elvis singers and musicians to make up at 8 p.m. Uh, 8.30 to 9 is the turnaround. Nine to ten is the let's see so wrap up and travel so yeah so VTR dress 
is uh, from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, cast calls at 3 p.m. Elvis Presley, Elvis Singers and Musicians Orchestra. And then the 13th and 14th. So dinner was from 8.30 to 9.30. Uh, let's see, VTR. Interior, exterior audience in, 10 to 11. So uh, stage show warm-up, uh, 12 to 12.30. Possible satellite feed, uh, let's see, uh, 12.15 uh, uh, p.m. So yeah, so wow. Crazy, crazy to look at the... It's really neat to see... And I, it, I like that it's reproduced so big that you can read it just like you're reading the original documents. Yep. No need for a magnifying glass or scanning it in or blowing it up. It's all there for you. Let's see. So this is, uh, yeah, so this is, yeah, production sheets and they're lyric sheets. <laughs> And now we're back in Elvis's dressing room again, but this time in color. Yeah. Some of the same shots that you saw in the older book, but you, now you see it the way they were meant to be seen. Mm hmm And you have a lot more. You have a lot more. A lot more. Oh, and there's one of those little <laughs> yeah. robots it's, again. It's another one over here. So. Come on, you. There we go. Iconic. Yeah. Now we're to the special itself. Yep. Elvis's beautiful custom-made dove. The black dove. <laughs> as iconic as it gets. Mm -hmm. Got the Kinpo Karate sticker on the back. And his name inlaid in the fretboard. Yep. Which I learned was actually all, all the customization work was done at uh, Strings and Things in Memphis. Hmm. It was not done by Gibson. I believe Vernon got this as a present for Elvis's birthday in 1971. Wow. And if you're wondering why the new Gibson Black Doves that are the Elvis model don't have the name on the fretboard, it's because they didn't do that. Mo they yeah. didn't do that work. So yep. they don't have the... Uh, yeah, they don't have the, the design. They don't have the design to do it properly. Yeah. Yeah, they'd have to, uh, yeah. They'd have to get at least high-resolution photographs of the guitar to re reproduce, reproduce it. Reproduce it, yeah. Does strings and things still exist? No. Okay. There is a company that's sort of the heir to strings and things, okay. but it's not the same business. Okay. Do any of the same people involved? Uh do you, I, I, mean, do you I haven't been over there in a long time. Okay. Uh, I talked to the guy who actually did the customization sometime in the 90s. Oh. Yeah, so. Or at least the guy who filled out the paperwork for it, who took the uh, order. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know if it was the guy who actually did the work. Okay. Well, you know what? If you can, if, if you can find out uh, the information on exactly who did it, it would be really cool to... Uh, yeah. It'd be really cool to talk to them for the program. Everybody might get a kick out of uh, that. I'll have to see if I can run them down. <laughs> or look them up. <laughs> I don't want to run them down. <laughs> I was going to say, don't, don't, don't do that. We want to talk to them. A little hard to... We'll talk to them first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and... You know, it just it's there. It's just so cool. I mean, we've seen this a million. We've seen the show. We've seen you know, so many things, uh, but there's just something about seeing the pictures, uh, and it would be really, it'd be really special at some point. Um, you know, AI is really coming into its own uh, right. with things. It would be neat to have these pictures as a reference for the AI. Oh, absolutely. And uh, feed these pictures as reference for the AI for uh, visual quality. Right. And have them apply that AI to the special. 
Yes. Uh, so that way you could have, I mean, you could have a 4K broadcast. You could upscale the Aloha. Yeah. I mean, always want to have the original without any manipulation, of course. Um, but having that as an extra bonus just to feel that much more like you're there would be so incredibly special. And I hope you all are enjoying this, this book as much as we are looking through it. Another iconic shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like there's one on every page. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And it truly is fascinating just how different his hair is on the Aloha. And, and um, what's your favorite uh, 1970s Elvis look hair wise? I can't really pick. I, 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 they all, they all to me, they all evoke a different vibe. Yeah, sure. So you don't have one that you prefer more than the others, though. Um, I mean, one I, that you say, I, I wish he'd kept his hair like that. No, nah, I mean, uh, I mean, you know, you, you get to sometime in about in the, in like seventy six, and I'm not as pleased right i got gotcha. you so i i don't really i don't have a list of what i think it should have stayed as or or i don't have a favorite but you have some that you like less than others exactly i, I got you yeah yeah my goodness you're holding more of the book than i am at this point that's uh we take turns we do <laughs> <laughs> one page at a time one page at a time <laughs> that's how the book works how, that's how a book works <laughs> we'll learn together uh, and in case you're waiting for this to come out on Kindle, it will not. <laughs> you're right. Uh, because what would happen is those would be immediately distributed all around the web. Yeah. Which, you know, maybe someday. <laughs> I'm sure someone's like gone through and taken each page with their cell phone. I'm sure. But you want these in full quality. Yeah. Yeah. There are some pretty amazing book scanners, but they have not gotten to... Uh, They've not figured, they've not quite, there are some things like page texture and stuff that they've not quite gotten to. Look at that. That's just cool. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Yeah. I really do like the, it's very tasteful. The, yeah. The, 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 the few specks of design. So and usually whenever they use it, it's just covering up what would be like black area in the photograph. Right. So you can imagine what it would look like. You're not yeah. really missing anything. Yeah. And can you imagine if every one of these was full size? Like sometimes they've got like a little collage. Yeah. If, you, if, the, if all of these was, were full size, how many pages this would take? You would need about three volumes this size. Yeah. I mean, I'm good with that. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate the layout, though. I think oh, I do, too. It, it's a really nice visual experience. It is. Like they said, it's a handheld concert just <laughs> without the singing. <laughs> Seems like that's an important part. Yeah, you have to bring that yourself. You bring that to yourself. Yeah, yeah. So get the get the Aloha FTD, um, and then get this and sit down, and sit down with this and listen as you look at the pictures. Ronnie Tut's blue drum set, that pearlescent blue drum set, really pops in these color photos. It too. absolutely does. Yeah. It's funny this uh, this giant uh, this giant lay, which by the way, my mother and my grandmother made this too. Um, this giant lay is like like I keep having to move it right next to the microphone. So, well, free ASMR. I was, that's exactly <laughs> what I was about to say. If you want some uh, blue, uh, if you want some Hawaiian wedding song ASMR. <laughs> And for those of you that don't know what ASMR is, just Google it. You'll be fine. That's it's very. It can be very relaxing or very exciting, depending on what your taste. And sometimes puzzling. Puzzling. <laughs> <laughs> often, often puzzling. Uh, 
Elvis is throwing his belt out. Yeah. Wow. I know. It's so cool, though. And it's nice to see that underneath you've got all of that stonework. Uh -huh. That's something that's not on the EPE officially licensed grand costumes. <laughs> But they don't have anything going down the legs either, so yeah. Baby steps. <laughs> ba ba baby steps. You know, get some stones and a bedazzler and just, you know. Knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. Yeah. I will say on the grand on the grand costume, at least the top is decent. Yeah. The, um, yeah. Pretty cool. We're getting to big hunk of love and can't help falling in love we now. We are indeed. <laughs> He's going to tell us what those wise men say. <laughs> so interesting. I love uh, it's uh, so nice, you know, for the most part, hearing, uh, yeah, hearing what most fans say that uh, they just, they, they love Ken Out Falling in Love, but they hated Ken Out Falling in Love because that meant it was over. <laughs> it was the end of the show. <laughs> it's the end of the show. Speaking of the end of the show. Da -da -da -da. Say. Okay, yeah, that's that's a quote from Elvis talking about what they raised. Say. That's a cool shot. Check that out. Very cool shot. Very, Very cool. cool. And there's, yeah, there's a, so that's filming the bonus. Filming the bonus material that would be used in the, the U.S. and other broadcasts that would come later in April. All right, documents. There you go. So we've got, um... Blue Hawaii, Hawaiian Wedding Song, Kuipo, No More, and Early Morning Rain. And so that's basically, yeah, the a &R representative was Joan Deary, Dick Baxter, and Al Pachuki were the engineers. So these are the, those are the notes about what was recorded. Yes. Yeah, yeah indeed. So the, uh, so this is the producer and the associate producer. With Elvis. So. It's funny, Elvis and his Elvis and his hair looks more like standard Elvis now. Yeah, it's 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 come a, undone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Colonel Tom Parker, dear uh let's see, Pierre uh let's see. Encloses the complete budget for filming the Elvis Presley show in Hawaii. I have included the budget, all uh, airfares and room and board, which amounts to seventeen thousand uh, dollars. Monies could be saved in these areas if special deals could be made with Western Airlines and Hilton hotels. The budget periods for shooting the complete show and additional documentary shooting uh, around the islands include a helicopter as arrival shots of Hawaii would greatly enhance the overall production value. Please call me if you have any questions. So, oh, so these, this is uh, per diems and all that kind of stuff. Any kind of documentation you might want on the Aloha. Yep. That's cool. So sound equipment. So you get a look at some of the sound equipment lists. And this is incredible. Yeah, this is great. Now I'm looking at this upside down. So Editorial for... supplies. I have no idea what editorial supplies would be. <laughs> yeah, and this is like the cost for scouting the special. Hmm. The camera gear, everything else that was needed. Wow. Cost quite a bit of money. Oh, yeah. And there is the Chicken of the Sea album. Mm-hmm. I get to see the... get to see a beautiful scan. Of the Quadridisc label, yeah. Indeed. And the inside. That uh, beautiful vintage coloring. Yeah. That we were talking about. 
on the uh, when we were looking at the Japan. And this is the Compact 33 release, which had selections from the special, but not the entire album. Interesting. And the Steamroller Blues single. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, mobile. I've got one of those. Nice. And we've got the 8-track and the early cassette hmm. cartridge. Mm -hmm. The quadraphonic reel. Now, that would be something to find. And yes. Transfer. A couple of Japanese editions. Mm-hmm. What's this? Uh, is that just description? Or? Um, let's see. It says Ellis receives a Billboard Trendsetter Award for himself and manager Colonel Tom Parker from Billboard. News editor John Sippel in his dressing room at the Las Vegas Hilton is, I guess, for the Aloha album. Oh, okay. And there's a record store poster from the Aloha. That's cool. Let's see what is that? This is more notes about what was recorded. Okay. On the special. Say what's this is crossed out. John it says omit. I guess these were cut off the album. This it's impossible. Lottie Miss Claudie. Okay, so those weren't done. Johnny Be Good. Omit. They must have changed their mind. Must have. Yep. CC Rider, Steamroller Blues. Mine's so, I'm so lonesome I could cry. And speaking of some of that, we're getting into that on another Aloha video. So. Check that one out. That will be for everyone. So, Little Sister, Omit, One Night, Omit, uh, My Babe, Omit. Let's see, It's Impossible, Omit, Lottie Miss Claudia, Omit. All Shook Up, Omit, uh, The Wonder of You, Omit. And it's funny, the, the what's included and what's not included really shapes the special in fascinating ways. Yeah. It gives it, it really gives it a, pers a personality all of its own. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even though there's a lot of songs, I mean, you know, could have just kept going, but yeah, Teddy Bear, Don't Be Cruel, if We're Omitted, How Great Thou Art, I Got a Woman, Omitted. I'm just curious, I was just seeing if there was anything written next to any of those. So, these are reviews for the special. Yeah, this is like a little TV guide thing, I think. Okay. Oh, Elvis Presley concert. Yeah, this is just information. All of us associated with Elvis want to say how very much we enjoyed working with you and your very excellent staff. It was a very harmonious uh, relationship, which I feel is evident in the finished product. So, on behalf of Elvis Presley Show... Uh, we send sincere thanks to all the fine folks and yourself. Sincerely, Tom Diskin, Elvis Presley Show. Cool. It's interesting that it's on M MGM stationery. I thought so, too. Yeah, because Pierre's, I think, was, too. Um, yeah, so 73 to 2013. There you go. And here we are, 10 the years 40th later. 40th anniversary book. 40th anniversary book. This is immaculate and incredible and one of the first times i think if i, if I remember correctly i yeah, think it might have other way no no i know oh I'm, yeah i'm trying to, I'm, gonna see if it works i want to see how it works it does not <laughs> <laughs> you get his nose <laughs> Elvis is, let me in i can't see all right so mm -hmm. here we are Fantastic cover. Beautiful. Beautiful book. Um, this is an absolutely essential purchase. Yeah, I'll say EP all yeah. the way. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely essential purchase, and uh, you got to check this thing out. It is so cool if you get your hands on one. But if you can't, hopefully you uh, enjoyed our little, well, a pretty extensive look at this. Yeah, if you're an Elvis book collector, this is one that's got to be on your shelf. If you're just someone who thinks you can do with uh, a smaller look at the Aloha. That's good, too. These are still available. Um, it's not anywhere near as lush and uh, resplendent yeah. as this. But it is a nice uh, little peek behind the scenes. It is. And I think that uh, 
you can still find copies of these used on the used market. It's yeah, been out one. of print for quite some time, so mm -hmm. uh, they're they're circulating. Yeah. Yep, they are. Look on eBay for either one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, and this is, uh, yeah, Elvis Aloha Pia Satellite 40th Anniversary Book and 25th Anniversary Book. Definitely uh, really cool additions. Now, this is, uh, as I said at the beginning, this is uh, Aloha Month, <laughs> essentially. Uh, so we're looking at a few different aspects of uh, the TV special. And uh, yeah, really, really cool. Uh, keep it to the channel for more really interesting information. Uh, we'll have some more stuff about Aloha and uh, pretty crazy, you know, 2023, 50 years. 50 years ago. 50 years ago. My goodness. So anyway, just, yeah, incredible stuff. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this uh, very extensive look at both of these. Um, the entire point of the EAP Society is to make sure that Elvis history is not lost to history. So in addition to doing unboxings and reviews and all of that kind of stuff, uh, we also are on, we're uh, in the process of uh, building the channel so that way we can collect eight and 16 millimeter footages uh, so that way we can preserve them and make sure that they are properly transferred. Again, making sure Elvis history is not lost to history. Also, we use the channel to talk about all kinds of different products and uh, a lot of different art, well, uh, historical, historical artifacts from Elvis's life all the way up until today, because all of these things, I know it seems weird to think about something that's just come out as being history, but in like 20, 30 years, it very much is. Some of the stuff that we grew up checking out, like the world dolls, I mean, the world dolls are uh, definitely history now because a bit back in the 80s, they were just like, oh, here's this really cool Elvis toy. So, um, you know, so it's it's it can be odd to think about, but all of that stuff is important because we it's better to it's easier to have an appreciation for where we are by seeing where we've been. And all of this is a piece of that. Absolutely. Yeah. And we get to geek out with you all and uh, check this stuff out. So if you want to support the channel, please consider becoming a patron member. Go to EAPsociety.com and click on become a member and become a member of the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. Help us grow our channel and uh, increase our efforts to preserve things as well as uh, collecting the footage and getting it properly transferred. And uh, let us do, we want to do live events. We want to meet you all and really grow the fan community for our generations, past generations, and future generations to come. So uh, that's all very much what we want to do to preserve as much of Elvis's history and legacy as possible and everything related, and we hope that you are along for the ride with that. If you cannot become a member, if the money's a little tight, understood. Uh, like, comment, share, subscribe. All of that helps out with the algorithm. We need to get as many members, uh, we get, need to get as many subscribers as we can on YouTube. So spread the word, let people know that we are out there and that we're doing all this stuff. And so that way uh, we can just keep growing the uh, group of Elvis friends that are all hanging out together each week. Yeah, man. Sounds good. Let's yep. keep rocking and rolling. Exactly. Love it. So anyway, until next time, I'm Jamie. And I'm John. And this is the Elvis Archival Preservation Society. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And always, TCB. My society, my society, here with all the friends I want to see. Don't need no high society to get me where I want to be. My society, yeah, that's for me. My society, yeah, that's for me. Oh, my society, yeah, that's for me.